In this episode of Land Cruiser, we explore the world of maps. Hey guys, it's Wonder Chrissy here again. Just wanted to do a quick video here about uh, something people don't use very often and I don't know if they would ever need them, but um, sometimes you might. The problem is, is that now that they're so antiquated, and what I'm talking about is uh, maps like this, old fashioned physical maps, which have been replaced by um, navigation systems, which, you know, some in cell phones, Google maps, um, which are great, great uses of technology and everything, but, um, Sometimes when you're, you know, even out in uh, the country and stuff, maybe they don't work so well. And, um, you know, you could probably have some issues. So, um, you know, actually I started my working career by working for a company, actually this company here, Ram McNally. Um, I worked for them for a couple of years in a IT environment. Um they were uh, known for their maps and atlases, and um, they you'll still see them today in Walmart and truck stops and, you know, Walgreens and places like that. Um, at least their atlases you'll see. Um, but they've been bought out. I think the name has pretty much been sold off, and, you know, there's some company that makes atlases is just using their name or paying to use their name to sell atlases um yeah it was a 140 this is a little bit of brief history on uh, on ram mcnally um it was a 147 year old private company which was when i was working for them they were still run by the family there was a gentleman by the name of sandy mcnally at the time that was running it, and they were headquartered in, um, in, a, in a neighborhood in Skokie off of Oakton Street and um, Central Avenue, just close to Evanston. Um, the company was sold in 1970, 19, yeah, 1997 to AEA Investors, um, which Technically, it was the company was in the family for 141 years at that time, um, in 1997, and I believe um, they went bankrupt uh, right around 2000 ish, sometime 2013, February 2013. Whoever owned them it was a Leonard Green and Partners at that time it owned the company or what was left of it, and um, and they file for bankruptcy. Um, you know, maps go back to 1100 BC, and that's the date of the first map that was produced in Egypt. Um, Rand McNally's first map was created in 1904. Um, you know, and these first maps were pretty much on linen. You know, these here are on paper. Um, very inexpensive. This one here is a dollar ninety-five. But I looked on uh, Amazon. You can actually find uh, various maps on Amazon, and they're they're going from six to ten bucks now. Um, so they're, you know, now that they're antiquated or you know antiques, the price has gone up to obtain a hard hard physical map um, and the other equation of this whole thing you know the navigation system 1996 is when MapQuest um, came into being and Rand McNally actually had a product I forget what they called it but it ran on a PC that was very kind of like the predecessor to MapQuest they had this database on a PC that they sold the trucking companies and what they use these companies use that for was to determine the distance and also routes um, between two points like the fastest route the 
the least mileage, which can be different because you're dealing with tollways and, and, you know, toll bridges and all that good stuff. Um, and, and also just the basic mileage. So if they were paying on a mileage to truckers, contract truckers or something, they would use that to calculate the distance from point A to point B and, and pay those people. Um, so they had that product when I was working for them. It was, it was, uh, I think they, they, it was, it was profitable, but I don't think it was super, um, well known. And, you know, they were making a, a foothold of that. And, um, you know, I have a feeling that maybe some of their data and stuff, you know, migrated its way into MapQuest and some of these other products. Just a hunch. I, I'm not really sure. Um, about that but uh so let's talk about street maps you know i mean there's many different types of maps there's geological maps there's um street maps um you know there's there's just all sorts of types of maps um depending on but most people are are going to have a, a need for a, a street map um basically depicts you know, the relationships between elements and space. That's how uh, Webster's would define it. Um, so as you look at the map, you can try to determine where you're at or where you want to go and and uh, where it's located and uh, how to get there. Um, so that that's the purpose of the map. Um, some other companies that, you know, really made maps popular was AAA. Back in the 80s and 90s, people had... The old AAA Motor Club membership, and you were allowed so many map printouts per year. So you would like, I don't know, call in or, or send a request via a postcard into AAA. Say, I'm going, I'm going to the Dells, Wisconsin Dells, this summer. Please send me a map on how to get there from my house, and you know, maybe they would send you some coupons and stuff related to that, uh, and. Um, uh, you know, some topics, you know, to tell you about the, the amusements and, and uh, highlights of the area. And they would send that to you in the mail. Or you would come to one of their local offices and pick it up. Um, the very first map, like, like I said, Rand McNally produced their first map in 1904. Uh, that first map was of New York City and vicinity. So, um, you know, that's probably the oldest part of the United States and probably well mapped at that point. So they were, New York has the honor of having the first map created after them. Um, from 1920 to 1980, physical maps were a hot commodity. Um, in some cases, they were given away at gas stations. Like when, back when you went to a gas station and they checked your oil and washed your windows for you, um, they would also give you a map if you asked or, uh, you know, if they were giving them out. Um, I know later in the late 80s and the 90s, it actually became a big business for Rand McNally um, to get maps into convenience stores and gas stations on a for sale basis. Um, they had, they had a division that had all these, um, um, vans, white vans that would drive around and, and stock up, uh, display cases in gas stations and, uh, uh, convenient marts, um, with, with maps like this where you could buy them for a couple of bucks. Uh, but prior to that, they were given away um, freely, and uh, you know, it was it was uh, public information, I guess. So, if I ever needed a map, you just went to a gas station and asked them for one, and off you went. Um, I know today, I haven't checked recently, but in the last ten years or so, um, the states, like the state of Michigan or the state of Illinois, at their welcome centers on the major interstates would offer during the summer at least um you know high level maps not real detailed um, of their state as you came into the state you pull over to the um the rest area go on inside and they usually had all sorts of pamphlets and maps and they were all free uh, i know i've gotten 
you know, as I went through my, my glove compartments of my various uh, uh, land mobiles, land cruisers, I, I got maps from Michigan, Indiana, Wisconsin, and uh, I don't think I paid for them. So they were, sometimes they're, they're, they're embossed with the name of the tourism council or what have you. Um, but yeah, so like here I got, you know, there was a Chicago street map. This is a very detailed, you know, street by street map. And then there's like a more high level, which is Chicago and vicinity. That's got the suburbs on it. Um, you know, and, and they always they always have indexes, right? You got an index of all the all the various towns, and um, it gives you the cross. Um, you know, L8 or A2, and on the map here, there's there's numbers and letters, so you can find out the coordinate and then that's that's where that town is at or that street is at and then you would find the coordinates for the other street or town and um, um, that's how that's how you would determine your point a and point b with a map so um, yeah the maps I'll, I'll be showing you i got some shots of the various indexes you know sometimes they have the cities and towns and the streets indexed um you know, they'll even have like an index like for Chicago, you know, it's pretty much laid out in a grid format. So um, as the number gets higher, the the farther away you get from the center of the city, um, either north or south. Um, you know, they usually have indexes for uh, big places of interest, such as the zoo and the museums and special, special uh, buildings like here in the Chicago one. Um, there's like a whole map of the downtown shopping district. So there's an index that pretty much tells you where all the major buildings are at. So if you know you're looking for the Wrigley Building or the Carnegie Theater, um, you can locate that on on, uh, on the map. So uh, yeah, in the old days, this is what people used to have in their glove compartments. There was no navigation system. There was no Google Maps or Google Street View or whatever you guys use. I mean, those are nice. Those are nice. To me, sometimes there's more of a hassle than they're worth. Um, um, and the old joke was you knew you were lost when a man would, would, uh, would pull over to ask for directions or to buy a map. So that was the old, the old joke in the olden days about... Uh, being lost which now there's no reason to be lost right you got got your navigation system as long as it's up and functioning um, you should be good um, so that's about all I have um, on maps so, so I, mean, I hope you guys I bet you if you look in your your car or your parents car you may find a few maps and you might be surprised uh, um, you know, they're, they're a thing of the past, but who knows, someday you'll have a use for them and maybe you'll, maybe by watching this, you'll have an idea of how to use it and not be too, uh, uh, too scared to give it a try. So, um, yeah, be on the lookout for Ram McNally. They make a great Atlas. Um, I know I've seen them in Walmart. You can probably find them in large bookstores and in Amazon I know they had a really nice trucker's atlas where all the pages were laminated and it was like a big spiral bound thing. I used to have a couple of those, but um, um, yeah, there's, they're a real old company and uh, now they're, they're pretty much dust. So it uh, uh, brings a tear to my eye to say that, but uh, you know, I was at one point part of that and uh, um, you know, they, they live on in many ways. Um, just a fun fact, what you didn't realize was that Rand McNally, one of their major company functions was they used to print tickets, airline tickets. This is the, probably the real reason they went under was uh, when airline tickets went to e-tickets, um, they, they lost a huge amount of money. They had the contract with... Uh, um, the government, uh, whatever the, the uh, transportation um, organization was for that, to print 
tickets, blank ticket stock for every airline and um, and even travel agents. They were all, all those tickets were serialized and pretty much money. Um, if you knew how to fill them out and fill them out properly, you know, with the computer, you could turn a blank ticket into technically money um, because then now it added value. So um, those were highly controlled. They kept track of, um, you know, where every ticket was at, whether it was used, whether it wasn't used, and if it wasn't used, where it was at. Um, and they had other systems too, once the tickets were used, if you had multiple uh, airlines that you use, the first airline would have to go get their money um, from the uh, last airline, um, the way the system worked. So uh, yeah, they they did maps, but but the travel, they were a travel company. And they made a lot of money off um, airline tickets. And uh, once that went by the wayside, they were hurt majorly. Um, so it wasn't the fact that navigation came on board that killed Grand McNally. It was the, the electrification of um, the, the prominence of e-tickets that killed them. It put, that was a stake in the heart of Grand McNally, if you ask me. So, okay, I'll end the map video for now. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.